Great. So uh, we sent some information around um, regarding tools. I don't know who had the chance to actually install the tool. Um, it's called Protégé. And uh, because I have some slides showing the metadata, but um, IRDS is best um, shown uh, in, in such a ontology tool. And this is an open source tool, which is not very convenient. And uh, they are more professional tools like Pool Party or I've used by, by Empolis, who can actually show ontologies much better than this one. But this is free of charge and downloaded by everybody. And um, maybe some of you got the chance to uh, download the tool and also merge the three um, RDFS files. So IRDS is, if you go to the IRDS uh, main page, let me just you need to register to actually download the stuff. But um, IRDS is um, split up into three. I have to log in. Sorry. Let's see whether this works. Yes, it's, an, it's delivered as three files, the vocabulary. We have a core vocabulary, we have a machinery vocabulary, and a software vocabulary. Um, this is called domains. And um, in the core, you have the central uh, concepts, and these are machine industry, machinery industry specific and software industry specific concepts and terms. We do that so that people only need to load the ontology parts that they actually need. Um, you can also, this, you just need to register and then you can download this and this, and then you can also view this specification, which is completely in English and which explains um, how to use uh, IRDS and has a lot of examples, also code samples of how actually um, content tagged with metadata looks like. So this is uh, from the RDF file, which is in the IRDS package, and you can see how actually the, uh, the metadata is used uh, in practice. So if you want to use IRDS, refer to the specification. So those of you who have downloaded uh, the vocabulary, you can, uh, you're free to switch to Protégé in between. I will do so as well to show some stuff. If that's too fast for you, please let me know. I will now switch between the vocabulary and my slides. Okay, so uh, IRDS is delivered as three um, RDFS files. RDFS is a format or a language to describe ontologies. And it's maintained by the W3C consortium. And it's just one way of to describing uh, ontology, ontologies. Um, it's an abstract model, um, meaning that you need to serialize it or write it down in a specific format. And this can, for example, be XML. And this is what we use because most in the technical communication world, no XML. So that is why when you um, look at um, IRDS um, and the code samples, just a second. This is all IRDS notation. And you should, as you work with structured documentation, you should be able to, to read that easily. OK. Uh, let's come back to our classes, uh, the classes of, of um, Felix Katos and, and Felix, which is an object. Um, in the ontology, uh, in the IRDS ontology, you find a lot of uh, classes and objects. The classes, uh, these groups, and in Protégé, they have those yellow dots here. Um, this, these are the, the concepts that we have in IRDS organized into groups. For instance, you have a, a group for topic types. And concept is a subclass of topic type. Within the, within the classes, you have objects, like Felix is my cat object. Um, and this is the actual label that you would use in your authoring system. 
um, as metadata item. So if you have a task topic, you would assign the metadata item, generic task, um, to the topic in order to classify the topic as a task. And each of the classes and each of the objects here has an address, a unique identifier, which is called in uh, IRI in, um, in ontologies. And you can see they all refer to TCOM. Um, so showed, uh, visualizing that this is a public vocabulary. Let's have a look at the model. The model is, uh, I think we have 22 main classes, so it's not the smallest one, but it's actually well structured and uh, you should know most types of metadata from your daily work. And I will go through the main classes bit by bit, and uh, we will also have two exercises so that you can see how to actually use this metadata. Okay, the central, oh yeah, sorry, I forgot. Um, so you have those classes, the metadata classes, and uh, we have an IRIDS relation concept. Uh, I talked about triples before, that you have like Felix as a cat or a topic describes a specific component. Um, those relations need to be uh, typed as well. So they have, they need to have um, classes as well. And this is what IIDS defines in the relation concept. And you have um, specific relation classes for all the relations that you can use in the ontology. For instance, that a topic relates to a phase of the product lifecycle. So we have a standard, a standardized vocabulary, we have uh, metadata classes, subclasses and objects, and standardized relations. The central class of IRDS um, is the information unit. An information unit is uh, yeah, the, the, an, an object where you assign metadata to. And you can assign IRDS metadata to topics, to fragments, to documents, or packages, or complete IRDS deliveries. Um, and that means that you can use IRDS metadata on different granularities of content. Because IRDS comes from the domain of technical communication, most of the metadata that we have actually refer to information unit because we are talking about content. And that's why we have metadata that refers to content, namely to topics, fragments, or documents. So this is our central class. There are a few exceptions to this rule, um, but I will talk about that later. Okay, let's uh, start with the first main class, the information type. I will switch to my ontology again. And this is the class for the information type. And the information type uh, contains uh, metadata classes for topic types, and information subjects, and document types. Um, the topic type should be very familiar to you. If you work with DITA, for example, you will see uh, learning, reference, task, and troubleshooting. Um, and no surprises here. We do have something like form, if you have like a form with predefined fields. Um, but this is all very um, familiar to us. So uh, the topic type describes which type of um, information we have and is, um, yeah, can be assigned to topics. Then we have document types. Um, a topic may belong to one or more documents. And you find a whole list of documents here, standard document types, operating instructions, or a bill of material, or a, a safety instructions, or repair instructions. So the question is, why do we need document types when we talk about smart content, intelligent information? We, don't, we want to get rid of the documents, right? Um, the point is that a lot of people still have documents. And they may be legally bound to or legally obliged to actually deliver a specific type of documents in their content delivery. For example, they need to have a CE declaration of conformity. And metadata describing documents is still useful. 
Also in content delivery portals, you still find a lot of table of contents where people can actually browse through content based on document structures. Um, so that's why we have a lot of document types here. And uh, last but not least, the information subject. This is um, these metadata classes um, contain information. Uh, yeah, what is the content talking about? What what's about? Uh, for instance, is that safety related information? Is that a warning message? Do you find the different levels of um, warning of, that you probably know uh, very well when you write machinery documentation? But also uh, things like, um, I'm looking for a flow diagram or a circuit diagram. Please show me this diagram. So the information, the, the metadata in information type enables you later on in the delivery in the portal, for instance, to very specifically search for specific information. The service technician could, for example, filter by its component or product variant and say, okay, and now show me all uh, circuit diagrams uh, that is available for this component or this product. If your content is tagged correctly, this kind of information will be very easy to find um, and can be shown very quickly to the service technician. On the slides, you will also see the relations that are used to actually assign this kind of metadata to your content, but I will not uh, list them every time. Okay, time for some action. Um, this is, and I hope you can all see that, this is a topic from the IRIDS um, sample content. It describes a, a fan, so something you can use to make fresher air. And uh, this topic explains how to mount the rotor of the fan. Very usual structure, you have a body message here and then some step-by-step -step instruction. If you think of the um, information types, which uh, type information types would you assign? Um, I will paste the link into the chat. And I will go back to the vocabulary. No, I will actually show the slide, I think. Um, so on this, in this quiz, you will find uh, each option is a combination of three metadata. And please uh, try to find the right combination. I will show you the slide again. You can see the, the quiz for yourself on your screen. But which information types would you assign to this topic? I will keep my mouth shut for two minutes and then you can start working. Is there, uh, if there's any question about the exercise, please let me know. Let me switch back to the quiz and see if we get some got some answers. Twenty four. That's nice. have to then this is the green one is the third one I think just a second 
task, warning message, and assembly instructions. Let's have a look. Task, warning, message, and assembly instructions. Yes, um, almost no wrong answers. Yeah, it's not it's not a reference topic because um, it, it has a task structure here with the steps, and that's why I opted for for task here. Um, thank you for your answers. Completely correct, uh, and it was probably not too hard. But you could also actually say that this topic could also be suitable for the operating instructions, and you can do that in IRDS. You have um, this metadata item. Uh, can be used several times on one topic. So one con topic can be contained or suitable for different document types. Thank you for the participation. If you organize information in this way in a, in a semantic network, this is how it would look like uh, in an application. This is from Ampelis Content Express. Um, I just wanted to show you to, uh, so that you get a more visual image of the network of information that actually is the result of um, using this metadata. And databases like Pool Party and Content Express are actually able to visualize this as a network. So here we have our, our topic, mounting the rotor, which is a topic, and of type task, and which is applicable for specific document types. I think Ulrike, we are still seeing your. Ah, now, now it's working. Yes. Do you have a lag? The others as well. Yes, uh, for me at least. Okay. Um, so that was information type, one of the most important classes. The other, the second most important, in my opinion, is the product metadata. Um, Holger, do you see the, the slide with the product metadata? Uh, yes, we yes. see the product metadata yes. now. Yes. Just a second. I think I have to see, so I need five seconds. Okay. Um, let me switch back to my ontology. Um, you can find a product metadata in the documentation metadata as a subclass. Product metadata is very important because uh, our doc technical documentation usually refers to some kind of product, hardware, software, service, whatever, you name it. So we need to be able to, to use metadata not only for variant management, but also in, in portals, for instance, so that people can actually filter buy their product or find information about their product. They don't want to um, have text that describes three variants and then uh, select the right paragraph to read. Those, those times are over. So IRDS decided to uh, put in product metadata in the vocabulary. And um, I will start uh, with the class that is very well filled, which is the product lifecycle phase. If you know, um, if you work in the machinery industry, your documentation probably follows the standard structure of, um, I don't know, transport, assembly, um, putting to use, operation, maintenance, repair, and disposal. And this is also reflected here. You can tag content with standard metadata, for example, for, um, for use, for maintenance, for diagnostic, for cleaning, and different life cycle phases. And um, IRDS decided to put some standard um, objects here, some objects representing product life cycle phases, and they are organized in four um, parent classes. The other three classes in the product metadata are not filled. And the reason for that is that we don't know which product variants you have in your company. We don't know which components belong to your products. And we do not know which functions and properties your products have. But uh, IRDS provides extension points where you can actually plug in your custom uh, classes, subclasses, and objects. So if you have a product ontology or classification according to E-class, for example, you can connect it to the metadata 
um, that is provided in IRDS. IRDS metadata describes the um, type of content and has a connection to the, to the product taxonomy. And, and, and this way you can say, okay, this is a topic refers to this um, product property, which is then classified according to E-class. Um, so we have a uh, product lifecycle phase, which, which is very well equipped in the uh, three docking points for product variants. Uh, for components, you can also build up a component tree in IRDS if you want to, because uh, components may have, um, has component relations. So you can have uh, a parent component, which contain, uh, um, consists of two subcomponents. And so on. So you can actually build a bill of material in IRDS if you don't do it somewhere else. Um, and then we have the product lifecycle phase and the product features. For example, this um, um, I don't know drilling or um, whatever your product does, um, measuring stuff like that would be in product feature and product properties would be a product functions product properties would be something like dimensions weight um, voltage uh, things like that okay product metadata any questions about this Let's have a look at the functional metadata in IRDS. Um, the functional metadata is called functional because these metadata classes support um, yeah, some extended functions that you can provide in your applications. And uh, there are five main classes. Let's uh, start with qualification. Um, your documentation may be written for a different target audience, for example, for service technicians or for operators or for programmers or for users, administrators, people like that. Um, again, this is very company specific. So IRDS provides the two extension points, role and skill level. In the role, you would uh, create company specific objects like service technician or administrator. And in skill level, you can store information about the level of skill like advanced or basic user or I don't know, um, key user, things like that. If you extend um, IRDS in this way, you need to make sure that you don't use an IRDS address up here, but that you use your own company um, URL uh, as the source for this extended metadata. And qualification is useful if you want to filter in the portal according to the target audience. For example, if you want to show um, if you want to hide service technician content from uh, normal operators, if you, um, and usually the portals know their, their users because uh, in, in most of the, or in many portals, you have to log on before you actually can use the content. Uh, so if you store the role um, with the author, uh, authentication, you're able to filter content uh, in the portal right from the start for this specific user. So this is one means of actually do personalization of content delivery. And then we have more pragmatic metadata, uh, for example, supply and planning time, um, which both come from the um, machinery industry or machinery domain. And uh, this metadata classes enable you to store metadata about uh, maintenance intervals, for example, or uh, the working time that may be associated to, uh, with specific tasks in your documentation that are described in your documentation. And um, the function that can be combined with that is, for instance, if you have uh, reached a specific maintenance level and a service technician has to travel to the say, I don't know, wind turbine or the plant, um, they can actually collect the information about the required maintenance before they actually start off their tour. And if you have metadata about working time or downtime, an application can use this metadata to assemble the total working time. So 
You say, okay, this is the maintenance you need to do. These are the four instructions that I can give you. And by the way, those instructions mean you have a working time of three hours and the plant will be down for four hours. So um, this is what you need to prepare. The same applies for um, the supply metadata, which enables you to store metadata about tools or spare parts or any supplies that you may you, um, need with um, specific tasks or any other descriptions in your technical documentation. Event, uh, again, is empty because uh, this is where you would uh, create subclasses or objects for your uh, diagnosis codes or error codes that are shown by, uh, by a machine and that may be connected to specific troubleshooting um, information. And this is the extension point for that. And action is a class that enables you to define metadata that describe very commonly repeated actions uh, by the user. For instance, um, saying um, cleaning a specific component or switching on, switching off um, a device. Uh, powering down an, an application, things like that. And we put it here because it doesn't belong into the product lifecycle phase because uh, common actions may be required in different product lifecycle phases. So you need to switch off the machine um, for cleaning, but also for, for maintenance and also for in order to do um, diagnosis. So this is, if you want to, Put a metadata item on a common action, this is uh, the place to go. Okay, so these are the functional metadata. And let's come to uh, the next exercise. Um, this is again a topic from the IRDS sample content, which has a usual table with error codes. Um, causes and remedies. And the uh, question is, which functional metadata would you assign to this topic so that uh, people are more, uh, can find it uh, more easily? Um, let's again copy the URL to the chat. And I will Keep the slide open so we can have a look at the at the topic. Mm -hmm. So most of you voted for um, product life cycle phase fault and spare part. Um, and that's correct. Just come back. Um, 
did we have oh, and, and the event exactly um, because the event class is where you store the error code and um, it's a spare part because you replace some uh, some parts like the rotor and the gearbox and we do have a separate class for fault um, so completely correct thank you it's and it's not a supply for the three people who answered supply here because um, it's, uh, just a second the supply was oh lubricant uh, we are not talking about lubricants here. We are just talking about uh, spare parts. A lubricant would be oil or a cleaning fluid or stuff like that. Okay. And uh, as you can see in the semantic network, this is um, gets a bit more crowded in the network. Uh, if you actually uh, put all this information in, we have still we have our topic which belongs to specific document types um, and uh, uh, describes a spare part and uh, a specific event on, and belongs to a product lifecycle phase. In this case, uh, the colleagues modeled it like it can also belong to two product lifecycle phases like repair and fault. So this is also possible. Okay, you are almost there. <laughs> We uh, still have the administrative metadata to go, and the administrative metadata is uh, what you use in order to describe um, where the con content is coming from, um, so meaning um, which party wrote, wrote it, um, and um, which identity the, the, the content has, and which status the content has. So the Interesting thing here about um, both identity and party is that um, identities and, and parties can not only be assigned to information units, same, meaning fragments and topics or documents, but also to product variants and components. And this is, comes in handy when you have uh, product variants or components in your uh, metadata. Um, and uh, you want to say, oh, by the way, in the spare part catalog, this component has this identity. Uh, so um, a component can have several identities and also an information unit can have several identities. This is possible in IADS because um, there may be um, different systems that actually deal with uh, an object. A spare part may be part of your bill of material uh, because it's a component of your product, but it may also be a spare part in your spare part system. And the same applies to a topic. It's a module in your component content management system, but it also represented by an HTML file in your content delivery portal. And in order to express that, IRDS has um, the possibility to assign several identities and also several parties to components and uh, content. And the content lifecycle status, very simple um, status like um, released or approved so that you can indicate whether this content is still valid. Okay, uh, you've made it. That was the introduction into the metadata of IRDS. And um, I would now like to talk about how to actually use this vocabulary and the standard. In, in practice. Is there, are there any questions? <laughs>